Let's get into our final part of the basics animation series by creating a walk cycle. So first off, we're going to reference in our character by pressing Ctrl R our keyboard, or just go to File and then Create Reference. And then look for your Michaela rig where you saved it and load it in. All right, here we have our rig. And let's enable the textures by pressing this button. As you can see, something strange is going on. It's pretty dark, all the textures. It's because our rig is already made in Aces. Like here, the new standardized form of color space for 3D. Maya still thinks it's in sRGB, so we can change that by pressing this button. Right here, the hyper shader will open up. And then here we have four uh, standard surfaces. These are the ones that we need to adjust. So you can just click on one and hold shift to select the other ones and then press this button. And then we can see our four node networks right here. If we press the node between the purple and the long one, we can have our texture data, so where it's coming from and which color space it's using. As you can see, it's sRGB, but the rig is created or the texture are created in ACES. So we're going to change that to scene linear ACES CG. And that's something we will do for all of them. So all four of them. There we go. And you can close this now. As you can see, the area looks a lot better color-wise. So you can already save. There we go. And the next thing that we're going to do is to create an image plane with our reference. So an image plane is a plane that's able to show an image, or in our case, it will have to show a sequence of images. So you can do it by going to create and then free image plane. If you press F, it automatically zooms to what you have selected, in this case, our image plane. And it's like an empty, plane, right? So if you go to Ashmood Editor, you can see it's looking for a file here. If you go to your folder and then wherever you save your sequence, I did it right here. And it, here you can see these are a lot of pictures actually of me walking. So we have some reference for animation. Creating a, a reference is very important. In this scenario, it's almost always done in animation to create a reference first by yourself or friends or just things you can find online. So you have a clear idea of what you're working towards to, what you want to create. And creating the sequence can be done in a lot of softwares. You just go from MP4 to JPEG sequence and that's all you need actually. And also make sure if you are going to convert your MP4 to a JPEG, make sure you also put it in 24 FPS since you are working in 24 FPS and all the phones are filming in 60 and stuff. So don't forget to convert, obviously. But I'll add this uh, walk cycle of mine, reference at least, to the series. So you have some walk cycle at your disposal. So just press the first one, so 100, and press open. And as you can see, we have an image right here. And this image can be scaled completely to whatever size you want, and we can rotate it. By now you already know all the shortcuts of rotated, rotating and scaling and translation, all the manipulators. So. It is me walking, but if we would play, nothing is happening. It's because we are still in image mode. We have to check this box, use image sequence. And now Maya will complain, hey, I'm unable to load this. That's because, as you can see, my image sequence starts at frame 100. 
So, and we are at frame one. So we can put in one or another one, offset, and now we have an image sequence that's playing. And my image sequence is 25 frames long. So we can adjust our time slider to 25. And now we can easily let this play. As you can see, this video is cut, right? This because I am going to only use one cycle. So my right foot here is at the front. So I'm going to edit my video until I'm touching the ground again with my right foot. That's all you need for a walk cycle. So there's no need to put in a video of one or two minutes. Just 25 frames is more than enough. This is our ref and you can use it in, in loads of ways. You can either just put it somewhere here so you have a clear view or you can scale it to the size of your character and then try to match it a bit and then you can almost go frame by frame looking at this. But for now I'm going to scale it a bit down. As you can see the right part is a bit dark so let's change the color a bit in the attribute editor you can manipulate this kind of things a bit and you can even take your scene color space and try to make it a bit more bright as well so it's up to you how you want to do this or you can just edit your video now we have a more clear video of me walking as you can see i did a side view and a front view since this gives us some readability on two important camera angles, right? So here at the right side, we can easily track our hip movements and our arm movements and our body swaying from left to right, which we cannot on the side view, but on the side view, we can easily see our feet, our legs, when we are touching the ground and when we aren't anymore. And that's something really important before we start animating because we're going to look for key poses. Key poses are the most important poses uh, for your animation. It's like when I talked about in the 12 principles of animation, we either do straight ahead or pose to pose. Well, for most animation, like I said, it's, it's more common to use pose to pose. And in the beginning, we were working from key pose to key pose. In a basic walk cycle, so just a normal walk cycle like you would do on the street or when you're walking from point A to point B. We have nine key poses. Well, actually we have eight, but we end on a ninth, which is again the first, since it's a cycle, right? There's something really important about the cycle that our first pose is the same as the last one. So as you can see, frame one in my edit is the same as frame 25, pose-wise, obviously because I traveled some distance. But in a walk cycle, we are not going to travel distance. So our character will be walking just in place. And then you can use this one and animate this one to make your character go forward and backwards in a constant loop, right? Because you have the walking animation and then you can just loop that animation and travel from left to right with our base controller. We have a few key poses that we're going to look for in our reference. The first one is our contact pose. So I will start drawing over my reference. And actually I will create a camera for this. And then call it draw over camera. Make sure I've selected this one. And I will lock the camera so I am not so I'm not uh, moving my drawings. And then I will start drawing using the blue pencil. Okay, let me change settings a little bit so it's not that big anymore. And let's start drawing. So the first pose is our contact pose. This is the pose where both feet are touching the ground. The next pose, so these are our contact pose, our first contact and our last contact. Our next pose is somewhere here. 
right where our feet is leaving the ground and this is called our down pose in animation in feature animation this is going to be a lot more expressive because this is called a down pose that's because here you're the most downwards position right before you go up if you would track maybe it's even a frame earlier yeah it's uh, one here and then we're going to our pausing position right here in our pausing position is the position where our leg is going to pause the other one so our back leg is like this while our other leg is standing flat on the ground you can clearly see it's on this side that they are passing each other right and then we have our up position if we just track it's gonna be right here i think this is our highest position is another key pose is our up position but this is where we are leaning forward with our body to get our body leaning into well actually get our body into falling on our next leg so that's actually what's happening right here and then we have our contact pose at frame 13 frame 1 and 13 are copies uh, well mirrors of each other it's exactly the same or it, at least it should be exactly the same uh, if you're working with a cycle but they are just complete mirroring so now my left foot is forward you can see clearly but here my right foot is forward but that's the only difference let's say and then it's the same thing over again so three frames later you can see clearly my feet just left the ground so we have a down position again right here Our legs this is our down and after the down, same thing. We're going into an up position, uh, sorry, a passing position where our leg is going to pass the other one. And then after the passing position, we have again the up position where we are telling our body, hey, fall down again. It's gonna be around here. And we're shifting our weight to our leg that's going to get in front again, which is our right foot again. And then we are going to land back as the same as frame one. Back in our contact pose. And then we have the key pose of a walk. Draw this a bit more clearly so I can show you something. So if you would now hide our reference and let this play, we can kind of imagine that there is someone walking, right? Oops, just play this, not really clearly, but if you use your imagination a little bit, we can see this is just two legs and some feet walking from left to right. So that's what we're going to achieve, or at least try to achieve in 3D. But this is a good starting point to understand what's going on. So let me bring back our image plane, which we can do by pressing Alt 4. Yeah, it should be Alt 4, yeah, image planes, Alt 4. These are the poses that we are going to recreate first. And while recreating this pose, because now we are treating it like a 2D animation, right, with the legs walking, we should try to think of how the body is moving if you were going to stand in front of it. So if we will do this, let me, we also need to think about that. Right forward, okay, that's one. But obviously our hips are going as well. So that's something that we can find here in our frontal reference. And also by using a little bit of logic. So now with this, with this reference and our key poses, since I did it back, I'm going to, yes. Now we have our key poses, so we know what we want to recreate on McKay. And then we can start with creating our first pose. The first pose 
is with our right foot forward. This is something very important on how to start working on something like this. It's to always start with the feet and the hips because the hips will decide wherever the rest of the body goes. So let me also put this in FK since we're going to create walk cycles in FK. So we can put this on zero so we can use these controllers. As I showed before, these controls are better at creating arcs. The best thing you can do is start with the hips and the feet placement and then put in some rotations as well. And then after that, we'll start to do the upper body since whatever we do with the hips will affect the top of the body. Okay, I think we are ready to create our first pose. If you want to split your screen or you have a second monitor and you want to see your drawers a bit better, you can go into your draw over camera and then go to panels and tear off a copy. Now you can see through your camera, the draw over camera, and you can here go back to perspective mode. As you can see, now you have one open with your reference and one open where you can just move around and adjust some animation. So if you're a second monitor or you have more than enough space on your current screen, I would definitely advise you to do something like that.